So I'm here with Matt Schwentek and we're going to talk about the Somatic Consent Year Training in 2024, right? Yeah, so first of all, thank you very much as well for being part of that amazing team of creating that. So I introduced Karis, who is actually the organizer and the producer of the year training. So with every question that you have during the year training, that's the go-to person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Matt is the founder of Somatic Consent, and he's the he's guiding and leading the year training. And it's an advanced training to become a certified consent informed practitioner and facilitator. Yeah, so it's basically for anyone that wants to integrate consent into a some kind of professional offering whether it's working one-on-one -on -one with clients in coaching or body work or holding groups and facilitating groups so giving you the skills and the knowledge and the confidence and the practice to be able to hold safe spaces for people um, for them to explore and to go deep into into consent and also, if you don't have any experience in working in these areas, but it's like you feel a calling and something like you feel excited about about this work. Maybe you've been to a consent workshop before and you're like, wow, I'd love to go deeper. Um, you're also really welcome to join just for your own personal growth or if you, you, you want to um, become a facilitator or a practitioner. So the training comes with four certifications. So for everybody who is working with uh, participants in a one-on-one -on -one setting, so we do a certification for empowerment practitioner yeah. to let people really find in their work what they want. Mm -hmm. It comes with a consent lab certification so that people can hold small groups, so two to four hours online or in person to um, guide people into the empowerment of consent. Yeah. It comes with the foundation certification. So it's a two and a half day workshop that allows people to do a weekend or a yeah, two to three day workshop and for the four pillars of relating and it's all built on another and uh, so that people really learn to facilitate and have a specific background on consent um, informed work. Yeah, so that's certification for one-on-one -on -one sessions and three different types of workshop that you can then, you'll be able to offer to people when you come out of the training. Mm. Yeah. I have a question for you, Karis. Yes. Yeah, so you have been um, in the last year training and uh, have learned a lot of uh, consent informed facilitation or consent based facilitation. How has this um, influencing your capacity to facilitate and how is it for you to facilitate consent workshops here in Angsbacher or on festivals or workshops that you do on your own? Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I was completely terrified about the idea of holding a group um, before. And if you told me like three years ago that I would be holding workshops for like 60 or 70 people, I would be like, absolutely no way. Um, so it, yeah, it gave me the, the confidence to just to, to, to put myself out there in the world and to to experiment and play and to discover that actually I really I really love facilitating groups like it gives me so much joy and um, it's also been really cool to be part of a community so it's like I just love year trainings like because you go so deep with the same group of people um, spending like three modules of six days together and really feeling like we're in it together and we're supporting each other to offer this work into the world and people that are have the same like interest and passion um about it so that's been really really awesome mm. and um and yeah so i've been offering workshops um in greece and also here at angsbacher supporting hundreds of volunteers to get consent skills so that they can navigate um, the festivals here and you know help them in their lives as well mm. so it's been it's been really awesome yeah amazing we were just a few weeks ago uh, facilitating together the uh, volunteer workshop here uh, yeah. at Engstbacher and I ask you to lead it and I yeah. will be your assistant <laughs> and if you if you would have told me a few years ago oh my god I was terrified I would not stand in front of people I would not do that and the way how you hold this workshop for nearly 100 people here in this massive uh, in the big uh, barn i was 
I was impressed the way how you hold that space mm. and how you were engaging with people. And I know you have done a lot of other work, yeah. but what was the main, the main takeaway from the year training, what you have learned from me, from the consent work that has guided you being an empowered facilitator? So what is it that I can put on my <laughs> shoulder <laughs> that has led you um, becoming a better facilitator or being a mm. facilitator, being courageous, stepping in front of people and doing what resonates with you yeah it's a good question um i mean i think it's this it's around this theme of empowerment actually which is really core to the to the consent work um and which has been a really big theme for me in my life like this this ability to step into my power and move towards what i want and part of that has been moving towards holding spaces or um like stepping kind of stretching my comfort zone um and taking risks and being more courageous and i see that the the consent work massively supports with that um so it's both what i'm learning personally and what i'm teaching professionally um kind of feed into each other it's both a professional training and it's a personal development training as well and is it Would you say that that's kind of even or is it more focused on one or the other or how, how, does, how does that work, being yeah. both a personal and professional training? I have to say in the last year training, so this is my, my uh, third year training in 2024, the first one I've done was Betty Martin, so we yeah. taught one together and was my partner at that time and then in uh, 21 when I started the first year training, I actually saw that this is an art form of really weaving it together between personal development yeah. and facilitation skills and just like making that uh, suitable for workshops and really taking the certifications out in the world and start practicing yeah. different modalities. And uh, But the main point that I always emphasize in the year training is in the first place Uh, for practitioner and facilitator who are constantly in a serving, giving dynamic, yeah. who are providing something for other people, that there is a kind of disease in the field that most people who are facilitating, that they actually yeah, could benefit from a deeper skill of receiving more in their personal life yeah. so that they don't have their facilitator hat and coat on in life all the time yeah. so that they really learn to receive. Yeah. And this is on the personal development level yeah. for practitioner and facilitator. So stop providing for a while and really drop into the healthy selfishness of receiving yeah. amongst peers yeah. so that you are okay and stuff will come up and that will really... Um, reflect back to all the shadows, the small little pieces that we all carry to get them out of the way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and not yeah. Become a better a, a better receiver and then a better giver in yes. your work. Yeah. yeah, I really resonate with that because I've noticed that. So I love connection and touch. I mean, that's why I'm drawn to this work. And then I've noticed that, like suddenly, I'm in, when I'm in a facilitator position and I'm holding space for people to connect and exchange touch and give and receive and have like beautiful meetings. I'm like, it's a bit lonely up here as a facilitator, and they're getting loads of touch and I'm not getting any. So it's like that being able to being able to meet my meet my needs and desires outside of the workshop space through my personal connections and be able to fill up my cup so that I'm like super nourished and like. All my, you know, my needs are met, and then I can give from like a full place. Yes. So that learning how to receive has been um, a big one, um, and is really core core to the work. Yeah, yeah, and partly of that personal development and of the professional development is just really digging into the shadows. You know, yeah. everything that we think individually is just like not existing anymore, everybody else can see. Yeah, and it's. Um, It's a very healthy, safe environment actually to be confronted in a in a good way, and uh, yeah, digging deeper into that what keeps us away from being a better version of ourselves, and yeah. just like doing this fine tunements in um, in uh, yeah little exercise. I remember one exercise that we did in uh, Shepsuden in the last one was about the imposter syndrome, just like oh, yeah. when you show up as a facilitator, what is the worst version of yourself that you don't want to be seen? So show yeah. up three minutes yeah. and, and really fuck it up, 
so that you not be afraid of when you stand in front of people that you fuck it up because it's totally okay to fuck up yeah. things. Having permission to fuck up yeah. is great. Yeah. yeah. That, so that we don't have to be perfect all the time. And, yeah. and, and that was a challenge for many people, I remember. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And you, so you say that the training is about empowering individuals to empower others. Yeah. So could you say a bit more about that? What does that mean? And how does empowering yourself support you to empower others in your facilitation? Yeah. yeah, so in the first place, it's really important as a facilitator and practitioner that we have you know, enough access to our impulses, what we need and what we want, yeah. so that we actually allowing ourselves to create that spaciousness to kind of notice, trust, value, and communicate what our desire is. Mm -hmm. And when we're capable of doing that ourselves, and when we, without an agenda, what we think we need to deliver from a place of this might be the right thing for a client, that we actually allow that spaciousness in front of other people, that they have enough space and time to notice, trust, value, and communicate what they want. Yeah. And we support as practitioner and facilitator people to find that from this inner impulse yeah. as a value so that they actually are in connection with this desire inside. And supporting them and helping them what they want and expressing it and acknowledging that even if we are not willing to do that but still saying, hey, that sounds really wonderful and how can I help you to make that come through? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and when we are capable of letting that happen in ourselves, we can make it really easy for other people to find it within themselves so that we don't have an agenda that they need to have the experience that we think they have. They have the experience that they want to have. And that in itself yeah. is pure empowerment. And even if that's very little sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, part of the reason why I like to hold consent workshops is because selfish reasons that I like to be surrounded by people that have consent skills that can ask for what they want that are really clear and direct that can say no so I can trust their yes and so it's really about like spreading spreading this this work so it's like the more facilitators and practitioners that we train the more then they share it with others in their personal life or professionally and it's like it grows and it gets bigger so I really like I I see your vision for this. So the training is made up of three six-day in-person modules and it's at a really beautiful, stunning retreat centre, Charlinga Sund, on the west coast of Sweden, just a few steps from the ocean in a nature reserve. Really beautiful. So there we'll be having our in-person modules. And then in between the modules, um, we will have ten live online sessions to really integrate the learnings and to provide continuity and sharing about how our own journey is going in between and we also have a coaching call with you matt and yes. there's different practices there's an online community and there are also self-paced online courses to work through as well in your own time so there's a lot of content to absorb um, and that's why it takes this amount of time to really to really go go deep with this work and I wonder if like just for people that are completely new to somatic consent if you could just can you summarize in a nutshell like what is this work that you are that the year training is initiating people into and teaching people to teach what is it? <laughs> well, in a nutshell, is as I said, you can guide people only as far as you've gotten yourself. Yeah. And uh, the dynamic of somatic consent is the embodiment of consent on a somatic, neurological, emotional level. So really diving deep in a short period of time and embodying it and using this embodiment as a practice of empowerment for other people. Yeah. So... If you want to find out more, you can check out the Year Training webpage. We have a live info call, which you can register for on the 11th of September. And you can also book a, a discovery call with Matt to, to chat about any questions that you have.
Yeah, I'm excited because the assistant team is made up of people that were on the last year training, including myself. So, and we're already sharing this work, and um, so I'm 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 excited to see like the next the next level, the next layer, um, and the growing of this community. Yeah. All right, I'm looking forward to have you. So please reach out, book a call. The call. 200 euro deposit if you feel you're not a fit you get it back if you feel like right i'm in then uh, we going on a journey together of true empowerment yes, yes.